For this ecosphere video, I ended up choosing a 3 gallon tall aquarium. When I originally had the idea for this video, I wanted to use a 2.5 gallon long, but I've been using it for another ecosphere and I wasn't quite ready to call it quits on it yet. But anyways, the materials I ended up using were a 5 pound bag of gravel, a dwarf sword plant, and another plant that I can't quite remember the name of. But it was something along the lines of dwarf grass, something or another. I ended up throwing away the bag before writing it down. And to finish off the aquascape, I used a dead bonsai tree. The bonsai was 12 years old when I accidentally killed it. Uh, I repotted it and I don't think it was the right time of the year. Uh, but it was still an awesome piece and I couldn't bring myself to throw it away. I've had it about 5 years after it died and now I finally found a home for it. So one thing that I found out rather quickly is that small narrow tanks are extremely hard to work with. You have to be pretty careful not to bump the other pieces that are already in place. As you can see, it was a constant battle between replanting the dwarf grass and repositioning the moss on the bonsai tree. But I feel like my hard work really paid off in the end. And since I used pre-cycled water, my tank was ready to go once I was done arranging its interior. Even though I didn't have to wait for the tank to cycle, I still waited about two weeks before introducing any organisms to give the tank some time to develop a nice supply of algae. The algae is important because it will be the main food source for most of the organisms living in here. I added this beta fish just for some temporary aesthetics. He was later removed and put in a 40 gallon aquarium. A 3 gallon aquarium simply does not provide enough space to offer long term sustainability to these larger animals. Because of this, I'm about to switch over to some microscope footage of me handpicking some microorganisms to inhabit my ecosphere. I don't know the names of these animals, but I have a general idea of what they'll be consuming and that's more important when trying to have a balanced ecosystem. And just as a side note, all these microscope clips are in real time. They haven't been sped up or slowed down except for one scene where I slowed down the footage to show a copepod catching something. But anyways, I hope you enjoy this little montage I put together.
So everything from these clips is what actually made it into the ecosphere. Most of the organisms in this tank are algae eaters, however I think I scooped up a couple predatory worms as well. These will help to balance out the population as you will see later. So now just like you would do with the fish, it's important to acclimate them to the new water temperature. When I first added the organisms to the tank, I wasn't sure if the change in the environment would kill them off in the first day. After all, I didn't know how close the pH, water temp, or even the oxygen levels would be between the pond and the ecosphere. There was too many variables to take into account, but as you'll see, it turned out alright in the end. Now that we have our completed aquascape, algae, and our organisms, it's time to seal this aquarium off from the outside environment. The way I decided to go about this was to put a line of glue down so when I put the glass top on, it elevated it slightly. This allowed me to inject glue directly between the two panes, creating a more airtight seal. I first put my pond water organisms in on January 22nd, but I didn't actually get around to gluing the lid on until the next day. Over the next few days, I didn't notice any activity, and I wasn't sure if I would actually see any after all, just because of how small these organisms would be. And so I was a little bit worried, because if I couldn't see them, I could have killed them off, and I wouldn't know the difference. Since they were going in such a different environment from what they started with, that was definitely a worry ahead at first. But about five days later, um, I noticed uh, the first signs of life, and as you can see, these little white things swimming around. I think they might be water fleas, but I'm not exactly sure. They were so small, I couldn't actually see them with my own eyes. It wasn't until I like, started recording on my phone that I was able to detect these little guys. And for the next couple of days, those were the only organisms I really saw. But I think it was like four days later that I actually did see some other organisms. They look like some sort of worm. They're probably related to planaria, and if they are, they do eat smaller organisms. But since I can't see them under a microscope, I won't be able to ID them. Uh, but what I know is that the water fleas that used to congregate on the glass uh, were replaced by those worms, and there's still a couple left, but not as many as there were. So I'm not sure if the worms drove them out of their area or if um, they actually did eat them. When I was filming the terrarium, I actually forgot I had a couple of acorns in my pocket and he ended up sniffing them out. And as you can see from the floor, he worked up an appetite flinging dirt everywhere. For those of you who don't know, this is Tito. If you want to know more about him and his story, check out his other videos on this channel. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.